disturbance, as far as I can tell, is really one of the hallmarks or the keystones of ecological land management. Is the, the question becomes, is are you a regenerative disturber or a degenerative disturber? Perennial grasses had this amazing ability that when they were eaten down by an herbivore or they were burned off by a fire, that there would be a corresponding contraction of the roots in the soil profile. So roots would, would grow back up to the core of the bunch grass because they're managing their top and bottom. That meant that they left roots in the ground, which is carbon that was retained in the soil. And then in the spring, they would grow back out of ground, they'd grow new roots, and then they would get munched or burned. And so they were always oscillating, contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding, which meant they were building soil, which is carbon sequestration, because they were sequestering carbon through photosynthesis and then burying it in the soil. Mark Stromberg has found grasses like purple needle grass individual clumps that could be 500 years old, one perennial grass, growing and oscillating, storing carbon. That carbon process where the roots go down and in and out relates to the hydrologic cycle because those prairies were sponges. They stored humus, they stored carbon, they perforated the soil, they opened it up and increased its porosity, its infiltration capacity. So they actually mitigated runoff by being able to retain the rainfall Rainfall is received, it's retained, infiltrated into the savings account, and then it can be released slowly. And so it increases the residence time of the rainfall and it elongates the hydrologic cycle. So in a Mediterranean climate, when you get a lot of rainfall in the winter and a dry summer season, you had a wetter ecosystem that supported more life because of the presence of this soil forming water retaining structure. It was better for herbivores because native perennial bunch grasses like Nacella pulchra, the purple needle grass, or Elamus glaucus, the blue wild rye, or Danthonia californica, the, the California oat grass, these long-lived perennials, they greened up sooner and they stayed green longer in the year so they presented a better forage for the native herbivores. Or if you're a cattle grazer or a sheep grazer, it's a more nutritious and better longer lasting forage in your pasture management than the European exotic annual grasses like the wild oats, Avena fatua, or the Bromus diandris, the ripgut brome, some of these exotic annuals that they're annuals. They have to grow, get up, flower, set seed, and die in one year. So they feed heavy on nitrogen. They're shallow rooted. They don't put carbon in the soil. They're highly reflective in the summer. They bake the soil dry. They, they, they move minerals very quickly. So from a land management perspective, if let's say you are a a pastoralist, a grazer, a rancher, there are many ranchers who are very much are looking to, to figure out how can they reclaim the perennial component of their prairies or their grasslands because from a long-term rotational grazing perspective you get a much better product out of it as far as the quality of feed for your animals and the weight gain of animals. Plus if it was done appropriately you're mitigating erosion and the loss of soil. I mean, even with that amazing process in a prairie, it may take 500, 700, 1,000 years of that natural process to make an inch of topsoil. And if you come in and overgraze it and denude the system, and in a couple years you lose two or three inches of soil, then you just lost 1,500 or 3,000 years worth of biologic process and now your system won't support the capacity to grow robust, healthy, resilient plants? Well, any farmer, any rancher, all you're doing is you, you're grass farmers. Even ranchers, are they just grow grass and then they feed that to animals and they think they're managing animals, but if they're really smart, they're managing grass. And if you're losing soil so that your grass won't grow very good, then you're losing profit. Besides the fact that your soil is now down in the creek, so I think that for it's incumbent on landowners who live in the, the uplands for both your personal private profit to manage those grasslands in such a way so that they don't lose soil, they're not eroding, their composition of natives is much higher because native plants are implicated in this ecosystem. They've co-evolved with the, 
the ebb and flow of a Mediterranean climate and they're very much adapted and they're resilient through time and it's a better, it would be wise to invest in those types of systems versus these annual systems. Restoration is the, is the movement for the, for the future and I think to get to restoration we have to step back and do restoration and we have to restory our connection with place and people and tell a new story. What is the story you believe in? What is the creation myth that holds power for you? Is the planet a community or a commodity? What's that story? And can you restory your connection to place and implement it pragmatically to get to restoration? And that's, a, that's an interesting conundrum for the future. Mm -hmm.